A series of storms is about to cut across a lot of the United States, and this will bring not only the chance for widespread heavy rainfall and the possibility of flooding, but we'll also be looking out for the potential of severe weather on multiple days as the jet stream kicks up. This video has all the details on that storm, plus a look at where temperature anomalies are going to be going wild in the coming days. One nation weather. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to tune into this video. I want to go ahead and jump right into it with the mid-level pattern, looking 15 to 20,000 feet on up into the atmosphere with that good old European model. And this frame right here, pausing it at the back half of our weekend as we go into our Sunday afternoon, really sums up everything I want to discuss here with this mid-level pattern graphic because what goes on in the atmosphere affects the surface. And in this case, where I'm drawing these up arrows, that's where we've got a ridge in the jet stream as we go into this weekend and early next week. Warmer than average are moving up through the eastern half of the country while we've got a trough or a dip in the jet stream and the associated cooler than average air moving on down here through the west. The contrast between these two air masses is really going to create a battleground zone, and battleground zones tend to be the perfect place for strong storm systems to move on through, and in this case we're going to see at least three individual low pressure systems cut through these central plains into the upper midwest, even towards the Great Lakes. We've already seen this set up once within the last several days as we've had that stronger storm during this week, but now as we move towards the upcoming weekend, towards the next week, we're going to see yet another similar setup and it will be for multiple days as we're going to see possibly even a severe weather event come along with it. Let's go ahead and time this out using the future radar overview from the European model as we go into the start of this week and into our Saturday, November 2nd of 2024. Overall pretty dry across a lot of the country, but we are going to have one pocket of low pressure. Low pressure system number one already bringing some rainfall here into parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska primarily. Maybe even parts of Arkansas and Missouri getting in on some isolated showers and storms out of this as well into our Saturday afternoon and evening. The best chance for severe weather as this first low that you can see exiting Colorado kicks up. That is going to be down there in western Texas and southwestern parts of Oklahoma as we go through our Saturday and Saturday night. But this is just really a precursor to the following storms that are going to kind of come behind this one. You can see our first storm already beginning to lift north in terms of its precipitation by the time we go into our Sunday early morning. Don't forget to turn back the clocks this weekend as we've got that time change Saturday night going into our Sunday morning. What's not going to change as we go through that nighttime hour uh, time frame is the heavy rainfall ongoing over a lot of the plains. And our first low pressure system that I was talking about that's down in the south central plains as we go through our Saturday it's going to lift a lot of its associated precipitation up through the central plains, mid-Mississippi Valley, and even up towards the upper Mississippi Valley and northern plains going out of our Saturday and really through a lot of the day Sunday. You can see that here. There's that low up there in parts of North Dakota by this point, bringing a big swath of rain from those Dakotas all the way as far east as places like Michigan and Indiana. Nothing severe is anticipated out of this, but we could certainly have some gusty showers pushing on through and definitely ruining any outdoor plans you have on your Sunday. Then we see our second low. It's already forming back down here towards the South Central Plains. After a Saturday round of isolated to scattered severe weather down here, we're going to see yet another possibility of some severe weather conditions in particularly North Central Texas and Oklahoma, but even as far north as Kansas and Nebraska, having the possibility of severe weather as we go not only through the day Sunday, but I think especially into our Sunday night into early Monday as this low kind of tracks on out into the Central Plains. That'll be something to watch. Just like the first low, this one's going to make its way on up towards the upper Midwest, so you know what that means another washout across the north central plains especially into the upper midwest and great lakes with just a bunch of good old-fashioned rain through the day monday and then our third low at the final one at least for the near term here here it comes ejecting on out through the central plains and into the mid mississippi valley i want to point out that by this point in time we will probably have pretty significant flooding concerns really as we go to sunday and monday in particular with any storms moving through the central plains on up even towards the upper midwest and great lakes in some cases so be on the lookout for the flooding but also there is that potential we could see some severe weather along this, particularly from Missouri and maybe even southern Iowa back down to eastern Texas. You can really see those darker greens. We're going to have some feisty storms certainly possible along this final cold front that's going to push through through the next few days in this region. Be on the lookout for those Monday storms. I'll break them down a little bit more in detail later in the video. But for now, finishing this overview of the precip, you can see as we go into our Tuesday afternoon and evening, our front really beginning to lessen in terms of its intensity and coverage of the precipitation. But nonetheless, yet another day of some showers and storms over the Great Lakes. We've now got rain pushing towards places like Paducah, Kentucky, Memphis, Tennessee, eastern Arkansas, and towards Shreveport, Louisiana. And then here we go. By the time we get towards, say, the midweek time frame of next week, all these lows, as quickly as they develop, they're falling apart, and we barely got any shower and storm coverage left with that front as it makes its way to the east. 
Now taking a look at the future cast precipitation from the Weather Prediction Center. Their totals, not only just through the next few days, but really just out of all three storms in general. Looking at this map, you can see just through Sunday evening out of our first storm and then the beginning of our second storm, already looking at a widespread inch to two, even three plus inches of rain from Texas and parts of Oklahoma up towards places like Iowa and Northern Illinois. But it's really going to be these totals that I want you to focus on. This is the total rain out of storm number one early this weekend and into the middle part of the weekend. Storm number two heading out of Sunday into Monday, and then through storm number three heading out of Monday into our Tuesday. Look at the forecast rain from northern Texas all the way and up there towards Michigan, a widespread swath here in those reddish shades of at least two to four inches of rain. That will be enough for some isolated flooding across this region. And then they're heading out of Oklahoma into Kansas, uh, Missouri, even northwest Arkansas. There's going to be that bullseye swath where we see not only some of that heavier rain with the warm fronts, but also the cold front severe thunderstorms that'll be possible. Right in here, do not be surprised if we pick up upwards of six to eight inches of rain, and I wouldn't be surprised if one or two spots get close to a foot of rain and that will be enough for some widespread flooding. By the way, I wouldn't be tracking any of this weather pattern as accurately if it weren't for the awesome weather model maps that I access from the Weather Bell Company. Make sure to check out the free trial link below in the description if you want those maps for yourself. Also, one other quick reminder for you right here on the channel, if you are new to this channel and you want more consistent, accurate, hype-free, educational, all the great things about weather forecasts, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below right here on YouTube. But let's go ahead and get right back into the video, taking a look at that mid-level jet stream about 15 to 20,000 feet on up into the air because this does a great job of kind of showing us where the troughs in the jet stream or dips in the jet stream will be and how those are going to support these severe weather threats into this weekend. Saturday, not much going on, but if there's any energy, it's kind of pushing out of New Mexico towards Texas and on the southeastern side of that energy will be the best chance of severe storms. So that will mean western Texas will be the bullseye zone Saturday and Saturday night for severe weather. But it's really as we go into Sunday when I think we begin to see our threats become a little bit more widespread. Notice this trough really digging on out of places like New Mexico on out here into west Texas, western Oklahoma, and western Kansas. If you're along that energy and especially on that east central side of it, that's where that best chance for severe weather will normally line up. And in this case, that's exactly what is forecasted. So out of north central parts of Texas through Oklahoma, even on up here, arguably into um, a lot of the other parts of the central plains, we will have at least an isolated to scattered chance of severe weather Sunday. But then your eyes probably drawn to this as we go into our Monday, because this is definitely the feistiest jet stream energy as that third storm kicks up. Now we're looking for those areas on the southeastern side of this piece of energy that's through eastern Texas. East central parts of Oklahoma, northwest Louisiana, western Arkansas, southeast Kansas, parts of Missouri, and then even arguably on up there towards Iowa and Illinois, we could very well see some clusters or a full-on line of storms moving through this area on our late Monday into our Monday night, and we could definitely have the potential for all severe weather hazards, wind, hail, tornadoes, as those fire on up. Now you're taking a look at the key for the graphics I'm about to show you as we go from Saturday into Sunday and Monday. I'm going to be covering their exact severe risk levels that I have predicted using my severe zones graphics. In this case, level 1, level 2, and level 3 you need to be familiar with because those are the levels I have predicted as of this video. Level 1 being a few severe storms possible with low coverage and intensity, level 2 being more isolated severe weather coverage, and level 3 meaning more scattered coverage of possibly all hazards severe storms. As we go into our Saturday, remember this is when we've got that weak jet stream energy push out into western Texas, southwest Oklahoma. While the setup is not entirely favorable for a bunch of storms, we could certainly see a mix of some clusters as well as some supercells that could produce not only wind hail, but also some isolated tornadoes. The threat as we go out of our Saturday into our Saturday night could certainly extend as far north as places like southern Kansas, so be on the lookout for storms. At least a few pockets of severe weather even on up there into some parts of the central plains. Then here we go into our Sunday. We're looking at another day where we are as high as a scattered level 3 of 7 for severe weather. That is not Nothing to play around with here from western and central parts of Texas through a lot of Oklahoma up in west central Kansas, maybe touching the southern parts of Nebraska. That's where that best chance for severe weather will be. It's a little more conditional the further north you go, but if we get the low pressure to really kick off some storms into the evening there in the western parts of those states, those could be the best chance storms for tornadoes. And then taking a look here at the setup as we go into our Monday, November 4th, I've got yet another day of severe weather predicted as high as a level three of seven for now. From northeast Texas all the way up through central Missouri, this is that day where we're going to have that strong jet stream really pulsing on out here into the plains, and the southeastern side of that could certainly kick off some significant severe storms with all hazards. Now we talked plenty about the severe weather and the general storm a pattern going on across the U.S. Now let's go ahead and shift our attention right on over here to the temperature anomaly graphics for the next several days across the U.S. Starting off with our setup as we just go into the start of this weekend, overall we're not seeing the crazy storm setup really building out too much yet into the central plains, and overall 
overall, we're just going to be around 5, 10 degrees above normal for this time of the year, or at least a little bit below average in other parts of the U.S., through our Saturday, no crazy anomalies, but that changes with a big contrast through the nation's midsection as we go into our Monday. This is just like that setup I showed you in the atmosphere earlier, except this is at the surface with our temperatures 15, 20, 25 degrees above normal temperature-wise Monday afternoon with southerly winds building on out here into the Midwest and Great Lakes. Meanwhile, back into the West, 10 to 15 degrees below average, and it is, again, that contrast that's going to be sending us on that weather roller coaster ride for a lot of parts of the U.S. in the coming days. Here we go through our Tuesday, and now looking at our Wednesday, November 6th, with those temperature anomalies. I've got forecasted around 5 degrees above average through the central U.S., but overall, the anomalies are going to be forced eastward as that cold front kind of breaks up and moves in that direction. This is that ridge I showed you earlier really being forced eastward by that troughing that is out west. Now let's go ahead and see what those temperatures are actually going to look like and feel like here as we're looking at the actual numbers that are being projected from the National Digital Forecast Database. We're going to run from Saturday all the way through our Tuesday here, so hopefully that helps you plan out those next few days. Overall, our Saturday morning is not going to be too anomalous for any folks. We're going to be, you know, in the 60s and 70s, which is definitely on that warmer than average side down here towards Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi. But further north you go in the plains, you know, we're going to be towards 30 and even the upper 20s in some parts of the Dakotas in Minnesota. That is more normal of this time of the year. We should be in the 20s and 30s. You know, it is November. Now jumping into those highs by the time we go into our Saturday afternoon. This is when I showed it just a minute ago that we're going to be 5 to 10 degrees above normal. Nothing crazy. But, you know, temperatures around 60 to 65 probably should be more like 50 to 55-ish or around that general area instead on our Saturday afternoon. Then here we go into our Sunday morning. Remember, as we go through Saturday, then towards Sunday and Monday, we're definitely going to notice more of an anomalous pattern going on here into the central and eastern parts of the U.S. with that ridge building creating all that warmth for these storms to work with. Sunday morning, you see those 40s and 50s up here into some parts of the central plains. Those circles indicate that those are record warm lows. Temperatures never staying that high before for minimum temperatures in the day since records have been kept. That's crazy that we're seeing that many of those projected warm lows on up there as far north as South Dakota and Nebraska. Here we go into our Sunday afternoon and evening. We're going to see the temperatures peak on up there in a lot of these same zones in the mid to upper 60s. So a little bit warmer than Saturday where we were in the low to mid 60s. Now we're pushing to the mid to upper 60s in this region. The further south you go, we're actually more like 70s and 80s back towards Oklahoma, Arkansas. You can see some record warm highs possible down there in Texas. And then here we go into our Monday morning. You can really make out kind of that boundary we're going to have here in the central plains by this point. The contrast of the 20s and 30s to the west of this boundary and the 50s and 60s to the east of it, that's what is creating this entire setup with storms riding through the central plains from Louisiana and Mississippi where we're going to be near 70 all the way and up there to northwest Illinois where we're going to be near 60. These are record warm lows for November 4th. I mean we're going to be at 60 in the morning on November 4th. That's warmer than the normal high this time of the year. Here we go towards our Monday afternoon and evening. While we've got rain ongoing here through a lot of these regions, we've still got 70s pushing as far north as Wisconsin and Michigan. By Tuesday morning, that boundary that was more towards the central plains now shifting east towards the upper Midwest, other areas of the Midwest, and then back down to the Mid-South. This is, again, that Tuesday morning time frame. You can see, though, right ahead of that front, temperatures well into the 60s, anywhere from Mississippi all the way as far north as southern Michigan. And, again, this is in the morning time Tuesday. Lots of record warm lows. All those circles up there indicating that projection in the Midwest, Great Lakes, and Ohio Valley. By Tuesday afternoon, you can see we've now got a cool down going up through parts of the north central plains with lots of 50s there. More seasonable conditions for highs. Meanwhile, we've still got the southerly winds and lots of 70s and 80s that could be record-breaking. Those are forecast to be progressing through not only places like Mississippi and Alabama, but as far north as Ohio, West Virginia, and even a place like Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania could be near 80 degrees on November 4th for a high temperature. And this type of pattern is expected to continue even down the line. Looking at this mid-level pattern graphic from the European model, not even joking, this is as we go through the middle to back half of next week. It shows another storm diving on down into the west, those blues indicating that area there, and then we're going to kind of see that contrast with yet another ridge in the east, and that could mean yet another active pattern late next week, something I'll certainly keep you updated on with my consistent, accurate, and educational forecast right here on the channel. If you're new or have just been watching and have not hit that subscribe button yet, please hit that like button down below. Please hit the subscribe button. Two quick things you can do to help build this channel on the algorithm so it reaches more people. Hope you really like this video, and I'll catch you in the next one, which will be at some point this weekend pretty soon. One Nation Weather.